Hello, my name is Kevin Large and I'd like to welcome you to the fifth in our series of IoT Security Raspberry Pi emulation videos. In this fifth foundational video we'll be looking at virtualized networking. Now of course it goes without saying that if you've got the physical hardware, for instance a real switch, Ethernet cables, Raspberry Pis, we don't need to worry about virtualized networking. However, it is completely possible to emulate the setup that I've got on the screen here. By using OpenVPN, we can create virtual network adapters, which we can then bridge, uh, which we can then um, connect to with our emulated Raspberry Pis. We can use the inbuilt Windows 10 bridging facility to bridge those virtual network adapters together which will effectively create a software switch and we can even connect our software switch to the internet by using internet connection sharing so we can virtualize or emulate the precise setup that I've got here in hardware but do it completely in software on a laptop or a PC. And this is my laptop. In fact this is the laptop that we're using to record these videos. It's about six or seven years old. It's an i7 processor, an SSD drive. So that's an old laptop. It's quite powerful. The reason I'm showing you it is because of the network connections. You'll notice I've got a yellow cable coming out of the side here. This is for my onboard wired Ethernet connection. I've also got what's called a USB 3 to dual gigabit network adapter. This just gives me an extra two gigabit network interface cards. Um, I have a red cable coming out of one of them which goes off to my IP video camera which I'm using for recording these videos. Uh, the reason I'm showing you this is just so as when I show you my network connections properties window um, you'll see that there are actually a couple of extra Ethernet adapters in there, which you will almost certainly not have on your PC unless you just happen to have plugged one of these in. So I'm going to have a little look now at my network connections window as it stands at the minute before we create any virtual network adapters. You'll see that we've got my onboard wired Ethernet adapter. So this is the built in network adapter with the yellow cable in it. I've got my USB 3 to dual network adapters. And these are not required for the project in any way. They're just simply used uh, to connect to my IP video camera. I've also got an NPCAP loopback adapter. Now, this was created when we installed NMAP for Windows. So if you've uh, chosen to optionally install that piece of software, you'll also get the NPCAP loopback adapter. And I've got the VirtualBox host-only adapter. And this is really useful. We'll be making good use of this in later labs. And this was created when we installed Oracle VirtualBox, so you should have that. And then finally, I've got my Wi-Fi adapter, and it's my Wi-Fi adapter that I'm using as my connection to the internet. What we're going to do now is we're going to create some TAP Windows adapters, or virtual network cards. And these virtual network cards will be used by emulated Raspberry Pis to connect to each other, um, to connect to the internet, and to connect to the Kali Linux machine. How do we go about doing this? Very straightforward. If we go to Windows 10 desktop, and we need to go to this PC, double click on the C drive, double click on the program files folder navigate down to the tap windows folder double click on the bin folder and in here we have three scripts we're only really interested in the top two scripts we've got add tap which quite logically adds a virtual network adapter and we've got del tap all which will delete all of your network adapters so if you've added three or four network adapters, you run the Deltap all script, it'll take all of them off. OK, so I'll show you how this works. We need to right click on the Add Tap script. 
and run it as the administrator. It is critically important you run it as the administrator because you're adding an extra network card to your system. It's a virtual network card but it's still a network card being added. We need to say yes to the user account control. The drivers will be installed for the virtual network card and then press any key to continue. I'm just going to hit the spacebar. And what we should find is we should find that this has added another local area connection and this will be a TAP Windows adapter. This is a virtual network adapter to be used by our emulated Raspberry Pis. And of course it's then just a simple task to add extra ones. We can just run the script again, run as administrator, yes to the user account control, wait a second or two for the drivers to be installed, press any key to continue. This should add a second tap Windows adapter. And there we go, second tap Windows adapter. And I'll add one more. So right click add tap, run as administrator, yes to the user account control, wait a couple of seconds, drivers installed successfully, press any key to continue. And we should find that that has added a third tap adapter. There we go. So we now have one, two, three virtual network cards. Theoretically speaking, we could add as many as we like. If we wish to remove those cards, we can remove all of them at once really easily by using the Dell Tap All script. So I'll show you how that works. We simply need to right click on Dell Tap All, run as the administrator, yes to the user account control. Press any key to continue and you should see it will remove one, two, three devices. So there are three tap adapters removed. We can press any key to continue and then it's simply a case of looking in the network properties box for our network connections and you'll see that all of the Windows tap adapters have now gone. OK, I'm just going to pause the video for just a second. OK, what I've done is I've just run the add tap script again three times in order to uh, recreate the Windows tap adapters. And um, you can see that they're now on the screen, local area connection, local area connection 2, and local area connection 3. What I'm now going to do is I'm just going to rename those because in a little while when we do the Kumu install we're going to create a batch file in order to tie these in to our emulated Raspberry Pis and it's a bit of a mouthful having to type down local area connection 1, 2, 3 etc. So I'm just going to give them a shorter name. So we'll right click and go to rename and I'm going to call it, um, you can call it anything you like but I'm going to call it VME1 for the first tap adapter. VME2 for the second tap adapter and VME3 for the third tap adapter. So when we come to creating our batch files it's just going to make it a little bit less to type. What we're now going to do is we're going to use the inbuilt power of Windows 10's bridging capability to bridge these three tap adapters together and that will effectively create um, a software switch. The bridge is effectively a software switch. So it will be as though those three network adapters were connected into the same switch. This is very straightforward to do. All we need to do is we need to control click on the tap adapters VME1, VME2 and VME3 and then right click and you'll notice that we've got bridge connections. Okay, If we actually hit the bridged connections um, option, what it will do is it will create a network bridge. And there you go, you can now see that we've got a network bridge created. You can look inside the properties of the network bridge by right clicking on the network bridge and going to properties. 
and you can see which adapters are part of the network bridge. So currently the VirtualBox host only adapter is not part of the network bridge but if I wanted to make it part of the network bridge I just simply would tick here and then click OK. We'll do that in a later lab when we wish to have our Kali Linux machine talking to our emulated Raspberry Pis. If we go down a bit further you'll notice that VME1, VME2 and VME3 are all part of the network bridge. So effectively it's just as though those three network cards are plugged into a software switch. While we're here, what we need to do on the network bridge uh, is in order for us to get our emulated Raspberry Pis to be able to talk to the internet, there's a little trick we can do. We can go to Internet Protocol version 4, TCP IPv4, Properties. We can set the IP address to 192. 168.137.1 and the subnet mask to 255.255.255.0 we don't need a default gateway and click OK. And what this will do is this will give us the IP address that we need to use. It needs to be that specific IP address it's very very important that specific IP address for internet connection sharing. We can now find the network adapter that our internet comes in on in my case it's the Wi-Fi adapter, it might possibly be an Ethernet adapter for you. We'll right click on that network card, we'll go down to properties, we'll go to sharing, we'll click on allow other network users to connect through this computer's internet connection and then just select the network bridge and click OK. Now you can see why I had to use that specific IP address when internet connection sharing is enabled your LAN adapter will be set to use 192.168.137.1 so I've kind of preempted it by tapping that address into the network bridge we'll say yes we do want to enable it what's actually happening now is my internet is coming in on my Wi-Fi adapter it's being shared with the network bridge the network bridge consists of VME1 VME2 and VME3 which will serve the function of the network cards for our emulated Raspberry Pis. Okay I hope you found that video useful um, I'd like to uh, say thank you very much and uh, join me for the next video.